hey guys welcome to my channel it's me Ada in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make an Ankara blazer or rather how to cut an Ankara blazer jacket so um, yeah if you want to know how to make this jacket please keep on watching this video that's basically, that's basically all I want to say um, thank you to my subscribers who keep on watching my videos and yeah if you're new here please do stay welcome to the family uh, and I really do appreciate all your uh, all your comments and all your views and all your likes. And yeah, let's just get into the tutorial. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Alright, so for the blazer jacket, the first thing we are going to do is to place our fabric on a fold. And then draw a straight line on that um, fabric. Make sure you leave about 10 inches, sorry, 10 cm on the right side of that line that you have drawn. And then I just marked one inch downwards for seam allowance. And then I marked my um, shoulder to bust measurement, which is 10 inches. So after marking that shoulder to bust measurement, which is 10 inches, I just use my ruler to make the line, uh, extend the line. I make it more visible because we are still going to plot other measurements on that line then after that the next measurement i took was my shoulder to waist measurement and my shoulder to waist measurement uh, 17 inches so i also marked that point and also use the ruler to extend the line because we're also still going to mark the waist circumference on that line so after um, entering that measurement the next thing I did also was to impute my shoulder to hip measurement your shoulder to hip measurement or your full length measurement for the blazer whatever you choose to call it but it's the same measurement so I also um, marked shoulder to hip which was about 25 inches that is the full length of the blazer so I marked that point and also use the ruler to just make it more visible uh, extend the line as well so after I was done extending the line I um, went ahead to impute the various circumference measurements on those lines that I have um, made so the first measurement I, I imputed was my um, bust measurement so my round bust measurement is um 10.5 inches so i just marked 10.5 and then my round waist measurement is 9.5 inches so i also marked that 9.5 And then my hip measurement, my round hip measurement was also 11 inches. So I also marked 11 inches the same as I have done in the first two lines. I'm sorry you can't see it. Uh, my, my camera was a bit, I uh, was positioned wrongly, I guess. So, uh, but I just did the same thing I did on the first two lines on that last line. Then I used my ruler to um, join the points. That is the bust point to the waist point and then the waist to the hip point as well so i just use my ruler to draw a line to join those points together so after doing that uh, the next thing i did was to um, work on my neck my neck measurement that is my neck depth so my neck depth uh, i'm using sorry my neck width the neck width I used was 3 inches, so I just marked 3 inches on that um, on that beginning of the fabric line. I, I just marked 3 inches, and then I also added another extra 5 inches, making that 8 inches in total because my shoulder is 16 inches and 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I marked that 8 inch point as well for my shoulder measurement. Then I just use my French curve, sorry, I just use my my ruler to join uh, that eight inch point to you know the to the beginning of the um, fabric. Then I just made my my neck width more visible and 
I use my curve to um, join that neck width to my neck depth. So I use free neck depth measurement. I didn't use any specific measurement. So after joining, uh, after drawing the curve for my neck, I just went down by one inch on that shoulder point, that uh, uh, end of my shoulder point. I went down by one inch, and then I used the ruler to join my neck width to that uh, one inch point that I made. That is to create my shoulder slope because the shoulder is slopey and not straight. So yeah, I made that um, slope. Then I just uh, went ahead to start my armhole construction. So for my armhole, I drew a straight line from that one inch point down to my bust measurement. Then I uh, decided to find my upper bust measurement now my shoulder to upper bust measures about 8.5 inches so um, I just um, marked 8.5 inches or I found 8.5 inches so I marked 8.5 inches and then that's from my shoulder to my bust I marked 8.5 inches in between it and then uh, used my ruler to draw a straight line to make that upper bust point uh, more visible as well so um, as you can see after I did that so after I did that I basically went on to find the midpoint between uh, the midpoint on that line that I have drawn from my shoulder to my bust yeah so from my shoulder to my upper bust sorry so I went ahead to find the midpoint on that line and the midpoint I got was about four inches uh, four inches there about I think yeah four inches so I just marked that um, point I just marked that point Please ignore the heating sound. There's construction going on uh, just right next to my house and I just did not want it to stop me from filming. So. so after making that point on the armhole, that is the armhole midpoint, I just went ahead to mark one inch on both sides of that point that I made. I marked one sorry one cm on both sides of that point that I made and then I used my curve to try to join from uh, the shoulder point that is the end of my shoulder point to the end of my upper bust um, line just as you can as uh, as I am doing that's what I did actually I don't know how to actually explain it properly but yeah I just drew, uh, I drew a curve from that end of shoulder line to um, the end of the upper bust line, basically. So after creating that curve, I also just tried to join uh, the line from my bust line. That's the, the line from the bust to the upper bust line. I just joined that space that was just left there anyways. So um, now I'm done with the basic framework for the um, front bodies. So now to create our lapel. I'm just um, going to first of all adjust my neck measurement. There was nothing wrong with the first neck measurement I made, but I just wanted to make it um, uh, the lapel to be a bit uh, lower, I guess. So that's why I, I actually adjusted my neckline. Like I said, you can use any measurement you want for your neckline, just depending on how high or low you want your neckline to be. So I adjusted mine freehand, of course, and then I um, went ahead to draw in my lapel. So for the lapel, I'm using my ruler 
and I, I added, I just drew a straight line of about 8 inches from the end of that my neck depth. I just drew 8 inches outwards, that is 8 inches to the right. So after drawing 8 inches uh, to the right, I also went to my waist measurement my waist measurement and I drew another two inches below that waist measurement so I made a point two inches below the waist measurement and then I used my ruler to join those two points together I made a point 2 cm, not 2 inches, please. 2 cm. So I just used my ruler to join that 2 cm point to the uh, 8 cm line, like, like as you can see. So basically, my blazer is already taking shape. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to um, put my dart to give it more of a uh, professional and fitting, fitted look. So, yeah. So for my dart, on the waistline, on that waistline, that is where we're going to create our dart. So for the dart measurement, you're going to find the midpoint, the middle of the waist measurement, the midpoint in the waist measurement. And my midpoint was about five, uh, five inches, five inches. So my midpoint is about five inches. Uh, so I marked that midpoint. I marked the point, and I even used the ruler to just extend the line to make sure that point is like very visible. So after um, creating that midpoint, I used my ruler to mark 1 cm on both sides of that midpoint. I just marked 1 cm on both sides. I'm trying to make the point more visible so that you can also see it. So after marking 1 cm on um, both sides of that point, then I just use my ruler to extend the midpoint to my bust line. I also extended it down to the hip line. And then I use my ruler to join that one inch point I made on both sides to the top and also join both of them to the down uh, to the down to the hip line as well so uh, when you're done your dart should look something like this of course you use your machine to sew on those two outer lines together to just give your outfit kind of like a fitting uh, a fitted look so yeah that's the purpose of the dart so uh, we are actually done with the uh, blazer jacket the only thing left is to add my seam allowance so I'm just going to go around the whole fabric adding seam allowance of one inch to um, make my outfit you know uh, not tight loose in case there's any need for any adjustment I can always um, just use that seam allowance that I have left so that's it guys on how to make uh, this blazer jacket the front of the blazer jacket
So after adding your seam allowance and cutting, your blazer jacket should look like this. The front of your blazer jacket should look like this. As you can see, I have opened up that panel that I uh, cut out. So you have two separate panels that look like this. And if you place it properly and fold it like this, you will see it's actually taking the shape of a jacket already. So we're going to go and cut the back now and then we'll come back. So for the back, I just simply duplicated the front on the back and I just made a few adjustments. Like I did not leave that 8 inch line for the lapel. I didn't leave any space for the lapel. I just went ahead and uh, started making my back bodies. I also made the, the, um, the armhole less curved. As you can see, there's one more curved armhole line I've drawn here and there's another curve outside it that is less curved because the back armhole is always less curved than the front. Then for my neckline, I made my neckline um, depth to be one inch, one inch instead of uh, any other you know bigger measurement i use one inch because the back neckline is usually higher than the front neckline so um other things remain the same i still created a dart the same way i made the dart for the front and yeah every other measurement was basically the same for the back so you can actually use your back ba your basic bodies block for the back to make this you don't have to start going through the process of actually making um another uh back block if you want so yeah this is how my back turned out so let's go and make the color so for the color of this blazer um i'm going to try my best to explain this so um first of all we are going to trace out the neck for our front part of the blazer on another fabric so to trace out that neck um the lapel of the um, front part of the blazer we are going to mark 1 cm from that lapel where my finger is that's the 1 cm point that I have marked so on the end of that lapel you just get 1 cm from that lapel and add it to the um, neck measurement for the entire um, front neck that you're tracing so I'm just going to trace from that 1 cm point to the shoulder point of uh, the neck of that my front uh, bodies that is my front blazer the front of my blazer bodies so I'm just going to trace that part so just trace it to the to the end to where the neck meets the shoulder okay so after tracing that part the next part we're going to trace is the back of the neck the back neck so for the back neck of course we're going to trace our back bodies as well so we are going to just place the neck of that body, place it on the end of that um, front neck where you trace, just place it directly at the end and also trace that point to the um, shoulder. That is where the back neck touches the shoulder basically. So just trace it to that point. And then after doing our tracing, we are going to get our ruler to um, add lines as well. So I'm going to, at the end of that, my tracing, where I trace for the uh, back, neck, I'm going to draw like an angle 90 line on that um, end, that end point. I'm going to draw a straight line measuring its, its, um, 8 cm so i'm just going to do a straight line of eight centimeters uh on angle 90 on that line and then i'm also going to draw uh another line on the end of the front um, part that i traced as well i'm just going to draw that line on like a 45 degree angle and that line measures um 6 cm so i'm just going to draw that line and then uh we're going to use our ruler to join the two points, the two ends of those two lines that I've drawn together. So just draw a straight line to join those two points. Um, I'm going to try to make another color and blazer jacket tutorial, but for now, uh, you can use this. Um, 
please if you're cutting yours do cut on the fold because when i cut mine i noticed that it would have been better if i cut that angle 90 part on the fold so that when i just open up the uh collar it will give me one long piece instead of joining the two pieces together at the end this is on a fold but i didn't cut it on the fold line that's where the fabric was cut was folded i don't know if you get what i'm saying but yeah just try to cut yours on a fold so after joining the line i added some allowance of one inch to the whole um collar because i was going to sew it round of course and as you can see this is what it looks like um after just put your interfacing on it and you're good to go as well now for my lapel i did not want my lapel to just be fabric i wanted to add something that will make it stand when i wear it so um i put this um um paper that is normally used to pad clothes um i've forgotten the name but i will look for it and also add it to my description so i use that paper to um cut out a replica of the lapel and i just put it in, in between my interfacing thanks for watching guys i have put a link for the sleeve tutorial in my description bye